Hi, I'm Ron Nutter, and welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter. In this video, we will talk about how to set up your Raspberry Pi 4 with aircraft tracking for your smart home. Now, this is part two in the smart home Raspberry Pi series. This video is also available as an Amazon flash briefing or podcast. Please go to techbyteswithrunnutter.com for more information. For any items mentioned in this video, there are affiliate links in the description. If you click on these links, I will get a small commission, but that won't affect the price you pay for the item. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe now and enable notifications. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on the like button. Thumbs up. Now let's set kind of the stage for how we're going to do this. First thing we're going to do is download and install the Raspbian Buster distribution, which is the operating system you're going to need for the Raspberry Pi 4. You will, will boot the Raspberry Pi 4 up on the SD card. We'll install PiAware. Once that's up and done, then we'll create an account on the flightaware.com system. And that really probably you should do on the front end. And I've already gotten that done for me. So it, you'll see how to do it. It's not a, not a big deal. The nice thing with doing the aircraft tracking is you will get an enhanced account that you wouldn't have otherwise because you're contributing information to the system. Then we'll reboot the Raspberry Pi and associate the Raspberry Pi with your account on Flightware. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, now the two things you're going to need when we get started on this is first you'll want to go to raspberrypi.org, downloads Raspbian, and you'll want to download the image that you're going to want to use. And in this case, because I don't want any graphical interface on this, I want it to be as minimal overhead to the Raspberry Pi 4 as possible, I'm going to get the Raspbian Buster Lite. So that's basically just a command line only image with minimal. And this is something that can be done with the tracking we're going to set up with the FlightAware stick. So I've already, save time, I've already downloaded this. So what we'll do is we'll go over here to Belena Etcher. And if you haven't used this before, this is going to make your life a lot easier. You don't even have to extract the image out of the zip file you're going to download. Because see, all you do here is just you'll click on the zip file you download it, and it's automatically going to pick up. It's going to show you the file name but it's going to show you the image it's actually going to pick up. So this is just one less step that you have to worry with. Now, in this case, I'm on a Mac, so it's already picked up that I've got a, a, a SD card in there. See, it's already checked, so it sees that. So again, you're, you're one step ready to go, and it's a lot easier than it used to be on, on burning car images like this. So we'll click on that, and now this is on a Mac that it wants you to enter your password and that's just so that it's knows that it's got permission to do it and as you can see it's going to take just a few seconds here and this while you know there's a little ad running here on the left but I you know Belena Etcher is a good package it's probably of the ones I've used over the years if you've never done this with a Raspberry Pi 4 this is very easy to use and well worth the time to get to know it and it's less it's less kludgy very straightforward interface so you can see it's it's moving right along on burning the image now although it is a micro sd card that we're using i put it in the adapter that came with it and i got a nice deal on some of these around christmas time where i was like five six bucks a card it was almost giving them away and most of these anymore the micro sds you can get them with an adapter shell in some cases, you can buy them without, but I just go and take the shell because usually they're not really charging any different. And that way you can never have enough adapters. And, of course, you've seen the card case that I've already mentioned in uh, one of my Christmas gift guide videos. And I'm going to have several of these for the Raspberry Pi so that I can switch back and forth between the different options. So you can see here it just takes it just a second. And as soon as it's validated, we can move on to the next step. And it's going to unmount it. Okay, so we'll say allow, that's fine. We will get out of Belena Etcher. Okay, now that we've got the SD card program, we're actually going to take the little micro card, which is what I should have referred to, it, and we'll put that over in our Raspberry Pi. And we're just going to reach over here. And we'll flip it over, and from the case that we put in here, the contacts, this little part right here is what will get slid in, pointing up. Now, we've got that in place, so all we should have to do now 
is switch oh well i'll first power up the raspberry pi and then we'll switch over and we should get input about now there we go now it's starting to come up and we should see it okay that gives the normal little symbol okay so it's resizing the system that's fine it's just it was configured for a different size micro sd card that i've got in there so it's in the process of coming up and we should have everything ready to go here momentarily and let me drop the uh, graphic out of the way here for just a moment so you can see the full screen of it so it's, it's going to take it just a little bit to get started so you can see it's already got the login set ready to go and if i had a keyboard attached then I would just log in. You can take any USB keyboard. And actually, I'm going to be ordering a keyboard on the next day or two that I can permanently leave, leave with the Raspberry Pi. And then we'll remote in from this point on. So we've got it up and running. It should already have an address. And we will then switch over to a secure cell session. Say that fast three times. Secure shell session. And then we'll have it a little bit uh, easier to read. Okay, so now we're at the part where the rubber is going to hit the road and we're actually going to switch over. I've got another laptop sitting right beside me and I've already got a secure cell session. I can't even say that right today. Secure shell session into the Raspberry Pi. So let's switch over to that and then we can move on from there. So now these are the instructions I'm following. Now I'll have a link in the description. These are right off flightaware.com's website. So you're just going to see what, what I'm doing, and then we'll shift over here. This is the Raspberry Pi session. I've already got up and running. And if you're not used to seeing this particular type of client presentation, all this is is an add-on that you can get with Google Chrome. It's an extension, so that way it's right there. You don't have to get any other software to do anything. So let's go ahead here, and we'll just mark this whole line. Let's see here. Copy. Ah, there we go. Okay. Well, W get. Okay, that's done. Now she's got to find out how to do it. So we mark the whole line here. And then we right click and go copy. Alt tab to get to the Raspberry Pi window. And so it's got the Piware repository all set up for us. So now what we'll go in and do is these are all the commands that are just going to have to run them in order. And I could paste them all at once, but I'm a little old fashioned that if something's going to go wrong, I'd rather catch it and not have to go through a bunch of error messages. So we will do suapt update, paste that in, and it's going to go through a little bit of gyrations here on doing a bunch of updates, but these are things that really, before installing anything on a Raspberry Pi image, it's pretty much a, a matter of things that you should do anyway, just have it update. So this has got everything in place. So now we will do the installation, if I can get it over here and get it the line copied. And then we'll paste that in. And do I want to continue? Oh, gee, it's only a 32 gig card. Do you think we can spare 45 megs? Yeah, I think we can. Let's go ahead and tell it yes. When I first started working with Raspberry Pis, well, back at the, was it the Raspberry Pi 2? I think it was the first one I got. I mean, you're, if you had a 4 gig card in it, you had a big card in it. So this is just doing all the setup that we're going to need. Now at this point I have not plugged in the little flight track dongle. I'm waiting until I've got this pretty much set to go. So now we've got to go through here and we've got it. We want it to do auto updates when appropriate and obviously I've got to do a right click and then copy for this to work right and then do right click and paste. Okay, now it's done that. Now we will also want to allow manual updates. OK. 
Okay. And now what we want to go through here is install the receiver software. And yeah, I think we can spare the, the 12 megs of space. But as you're seeing so far, this is really very straightforward. You literally just follow the instructions and you should see it come right to, uh, right to the process. Okay. All right. Well. This touchpad on the Chromebook gets, gets a little touchy at times. And then, well, that didn't work right because it didn't stay marked. Okay, copy. And we will... Yeah, I think we can spare another 45 megs of space. What do you all think? And as you can see, it, it literally, it's the beauty of, of the way the folks at Flyware got this all set up. It just simply runs. And I, I'm sure there may be cases when it airs out. But you know, so far, this is going significantly smoother than I would have thought. And it's creating the, some different links and everything. So it's restarting some services. And I'm going to, it says to do a reboot, but I want to do a shutdown. And okay, so it's already, it's in the process of powering down and we can switch over to the direct link and you should see, okay, it looks like it's already down at this point because I'm, I'm, I'm basically put a switch input over on there. So it's, uh, it's done. Okay, so what I'm going to do is switch, move back over here. And now we will take the little, well, actually move over and switch cameras. Uh, we'll actually undo, take off the little plastic cap here and plug this in. We're going to have to plug into one of the USB 2.0 interfaces because with the uh, Ethernet cable and, and the way that I have to use a USB extender. Now, we obviously still have to hook on the antenna. Now, with the Raspberry Pi in its current location, I'm not expecting it to pick up uh, a lot of flight traffic. And depending on where you are in relation to a major airport like Denver, Kansas City, uh, Chicago, something like that, it may take a while before your device picks up any information. So don't panic right away, but it's going to you know, it's just going to take a while. So now let's go ahead and turn the Raspberry Pi back on. And let's go ahead and see if we can reestablish our session. It's going to take just a little bit to... Okay, that was quicker than I thought. Okay, so it's trying to connect to it. Okay. So I may have gotten a little ahead of the game here. But let's, uh, okay, let me, in this day of instant gratification and we want everything now. So let's, ah, there we go. There's, there's the other window. I just was, I wanted to see where it was coming up. That's why I've got an HDMI connection directly out of the Raspberry Pi. So... There we go. And then now that we've switched over here, now it did finally come back and ask for the password. So we'll, since we're running the default accounts on here, which I would encourage you to change at some point, that we need and we need to change the uh, both the account and the and the password. So it says security risk, but right now this is we're just testing to get this up and running. So we're not going to uh, worry about it a whole lot. And since we've already done a reboot the in the old-fashioned way, so now we're going to switch over. And I've already logged in at this point, so we will tell it to check in.
for the Raspberry Pi. Aha! It found it, and it did not take five minutes. So that's good. So it says it already sees the software. And so it's claimed it. And at this point, because it's local, that helped. But if you're if your laptop's on a different network than the RPI, then it may just take a little bit of time to do it. But obviously, local discovery is better. So now it's just a case, and we'll look at the statistics, which I wouldn't expect it to have any statistics at this point. And that, but this is what you'd expect to see. So this is something that is very handy to have. I mean, I, I've been a, a fan of aviation off and on for many years for a while I flew with Civil Air Patrol which is an interesting experience if you ever want to get into that there is a lot of good things you can do you may be working in conjunction or support with the state police in drug introduction when they're flying uh, low flying helicopters and you're relaying their radio traffic back to state police headquarters or wherever it's being handled from especially in times of Emergency Civil Air Patrol can be very useful because they've got uh, single engine Cessnas for the most part. And I actually got ground school training on one of the glass cockpit ones. So anyway, but I'm, I'm going on. I just, I like to know what's up in the air. Now, this is something that as the uh, planes are being upgraded or it's a new one that's just come out, they have a transmitter that this is actually picking up information from. So the fact that it came up this quickly uh i'm impressed so really this is it's just going to take time to populate this and to see what it's capable of picking up so you see what's involved this really i mean you saw the instructions i follow we'll go back over here to hit the right button there we go it's amazing when you hit the right button on the controller so this literally i just followed the directions that were here again i'll put links to that in the show notes and we went with the buster light distribution because i wanted minimal overhead on this to get it up and running so now it's just a case of hurry up and wait and i'm in an area where i may not have a good view of the sky from the window i'm going to put this in so it may take a while for me to see anything but you never know so thank you for watching this one we're, we're going to be doing more videos in the uh in the series and i've got a lot of things planned and you can see this was very straightforward now at some point you're going to see videos to the right or left of me on the next steps in the series of the one you're watching or some other content i've produced if this video helps you or provides value, please click on the button, which is thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on the subscribe button now and enable notifications. And we'll see you in the next video. Take care.